So if you are joining us from home this morning, welcome to Peoples. I hope you'll be an active participant and follow along with the word for all of our readings, prayers, and songs that will be on screen. We would love it if you could like the video or comment to say good morning so that we know who is worshiping with us today. If you happen to have a candle handy, I invite you to light it now. Small rituals like lighting a candle can help us to feel like a moment or space is holy or a set apart time for God. And so now I'd like to invite us into our opening prayer. Would you join me with what's written in your bulletin or online on the screen? Spirit of truth, come and search our hearts. What attention might our souls need? Where there is resentment building, pain unaddressed or unresolved conflict still weighing heavy, tend to our needs. Guide us in your wisdom as we seek healing and repair. Help us to support one another in the sacred labors of nurturing love from within. Amen. Uh, people of God, in the covenant of baptism, we are claimed by Christ Jesus and called to be saints. Therefore, with faith and confidence, let us confess our sin and ask for God's grace, calling on the name of our Savior and Lord. Please join us with a, me in our unison prayer of confession, followed by a time of silent personal confession. Let us pray. Holy God, we confess that we bow before other gods, we have turned our hearts away from you. Our worship of work and devotion to consumerism hurts our love for you and one another. Forgive us, God, and mend what is broken in our world so we can fully embrace your love. Siblings in Christ, by the mercy and love of Christ, our sins are forgiven. Sing praises with an upright heart as we learn the ways of God this morning.
send your spirit, O God, to search us and teach us. Help us to understand the wisdom of your way. Give us the mind of Christ, by whose gracious word we live, and in whose holy name we pray. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes to us from Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him, seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy. This passage is part of a much larger address from Moses, most commonly known as his farewell address to the people of Israel. To give you all some context real quick, Moses had been leading the Israelites through the wilderness after helping them escape from Egypt and from Pharaoh. He's been their fearless leader, someone who has reprimanded them for creating false idols, but was also their biggest advocate during their wandering. Well, spoiler alert for those who haven't read all of Deuteronomy, Moses finds out that he will not actually cross into the promised land with the other Israelites. He will die before then, and a new leader will help them cross into the promised land. So a lot of Deuteronomy is spent on long speeches given by Moses, reminding the Israelites what they have learned and how they can continue living as people of God. And so with that context in mind, let us hear these words from Moses' farewell address to the Israelites. Look here. Today I've set before you life and what's good versus death and what's wrong. If you obey the Lord your God's commandments that I'm commanding you right now by loving your God, by walking in God's ways, and by keeping God's commandments, regulations, and case laws, then you will live and thrive, and the Lord your God will bless you and the land you are will bless you and the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, and so are misled, worshiping other gods and serving them, I'm telling you right now that you will definitely die. You will not prolong your life on the fertile land that you are crossing the Jordan River to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth as my witnesses against you right now. I have set life and death, blessing and curse before you. Now choose life so that you and your descendants will live by loving the Lord your God, by obeying God's voice, and by clinging to God. That's how you will survive and live long on the fertile land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So if you're anything like me, you probably have a lot of thoughts in your brain around this text. You might be thinking, well, this is simple. Of course I'm going to choose a life of blessing instead of a life of curses. Or you may be thinking, but wait, this is terrible theology. What was Moses thinking? God doesn't bless good people and curse bad people. God loves everyone. And you're right, God does love everyone. The retribution theology represented here and throughout Deuteronomy is one that most of us struggle with for a variety of reasons. Because it's too close to the prosperity gospel that preys on the financially vulnerable and in, in, in need, and in need. That's a difficult phrase to say. I don't know why I wrote that in. Um, <laughs> because it might shatter the idea that God's love and grace is being freely given to us. Because it just feels, well, not right when you think about it a little too long. But it does make me curious why Moses' command is to choose life and how simple 
and yet not so simple that choice is. When I hear these words, choose life, many thoughts come to my brain. I start hearing other words and phrases from the pro-life, pro-choice debate around choosing what life means for each side of that argument. I hear words and phrases from my favorite suicide prevention advocacy group to write love on her arms about why someone should continue choosing life over death and how much support there really is out there for folks who are struggling with mental illness and thoughts of self-harm. Maybe you're thinking of the Choose Life campaign from the 1980s. It was an anti-drug campaign all about choosing all of these other aspects of, of life over using drugs. So what did Moses mean when he told the Israelites, choose life? Was it purely a statement on choosing to do good so they'll be rewarded and not punished? Was it an early warning that there would, be, that there would one day be all of these choices to make in life that could negatively affect our lives or positively affect our lives? So we should always remember to tread cautiously and choose life. I think it may have been a little bit of both for them. For right or for wrong, what we call retribution theology today was a way that the Israelites and their leaders explained a lot of what happened to them. It was one of their coping mechanisms that helped them come to terms with the bad things that happened to them and would continue to happen to them throughout the rest of the Bible. It was a way of giving them hope during the bad times and a reminder to not let the good things go to their heads because one simple choice could change everything. And Moses' command to choose life wasn't just about not doing bad things like worshiping other gods and creating false idols, though that's important too. It's also a call to remember God's ways of justice, righteousness, and loving kindness, and how we are all called to these same acts of justice, not only as individuals, but as a whole community. Because Moses is talking to the entirety of the Israelite people, not just a small group of leaders, not just the session or the deacons, not just to a small group of believers at that time. Moses' call to action to life goes beyond that individual choice to the choices of an entire nation. So how are we going to live into our calling to choose life Choose justice, choose righteousness, choose God's loving kindness in our world. And while much easier said than done, one way is to advocate for choices that benefit entire communities instead of just one person or one part of that community. One way that's honestly particularly close to my heart this month is advocating for health care for all and more importantly to me, affordable health care for all. Every January and February, when deductibles have reset, I'm reminded just how expensive it is to be disabled or have any chronic health concerns in this country, even with excellent health care like I currently have. And these ever-rising costs are not because technology is rapidly changing and so we need to keep up with research and development. It's not because the base materials are expensive and so the, of course the product will be expensive. It's neither of those things. It's pure greed from for-profit companies and institutions that don't care about hurting individuals as long as they continue to bring in absurd amounts of money off their life-saving products. And so following Moses' command to choose life in this instance is to choose a path forward that advocates for those who are being taken advantage of for those who are paying more than $300 for a bottle of insulin that only costs $6 to make, or those who are risking using an expired EpiPen because it's too expensive to buy a new one each and every single year and they expire after a year, or those who are stuck in a job that drains the joy from their life, but at least it gives them health care. And while I personally could choose to just focus on health cares for diabetics because I am a type 1 diabetic, or health care for Presbyterians because I am a Presbyterian pastor and I like y'all, that wouldn't be taking Moses' call and ultimately God's call to its full potential because that would leave out huge demographics that I'm not a part of that are also being harmed by for-profit health care. 
So I tell you all of this this morning, not because it's easy, not because we're going to hear this and get it right from here on out, but because it bears remembering that our choices do in fact matter. They may not matter in the sense that God will bless us or curse us like the Israelites were taught, but our choices can make a huge impact on our community if we work together for change. It takes a choice not only to learn about the harm going on, but to actively work against that harm and help others to actively work against it. And I know you all do great mission work, but I don't know what mission work you do. So I'm gonna reference the mission work that First Prez does, because that's where I work. <laughs> and I know that just as First Prez is doing hard work, you all are doing hard work as well. At First Prez, we have a mission grant team that um, gives out grants of money to local organizations um, who need a little bit of help, a little bit of startup money, whatever it might be. And so our particular team right now is actively working towards determining our goal for how many grants they want to give out and also what areas of need they hope will be addressed through these grants. Needs like inaccessible housing, access to mental health resources, or investing in tutoring programs that help young folks graduate from high school and have a higher chance of ending that generational poverty for themselves and for their family. And so that's just a little bit of what what we're doing. I can only imagine what you all are doing. And so this week, I want to encourage you to think about choosing life and what that means to you. What needs do you see in the community and our nation that need our attention? What choices can you make that will help address those needs? Who and what are your circles of impact that can grow into a larger circle of impact? Friends, God calls us to some pretty hard work of justice and righteousness and loving kindness. But fortunately, God doesn't call us to that work alone. We have one another to lean on as we make this simple yet incredibly hard choice to choose life this day and every day. Amen. Please be seated. And let us now join in prayer in this time of prayer together. Let us pray. We pray for the health and vitality of the church. You command us to honor you by loving one another, yet all too often there is quarreling and jealousy among us. Help us to live your law of love as we seek to grow into the full stature of Christ. 
loving God, help us to turn our hearts towards you. We pray for the welfare of the world. You have blessed us with every skill and gift for nurturing the common good, yet our self-centered ways incline our hearts towards evil. Strengthen us to work together for the mutual benefit of neighbors near and far, and for the life and prosperity of one another. We pray for the well-being of your creation. Our choices wreak havoc on the world you have made and put your planet in peril. Guide our patterns of consumption for the flourishing of all creation and for all generations. We pray for all who suffer and are in need. You call us to care for one another with compassion and steadfast love, yet we wither in the face of anguish and brokenness. Equip us for the work of reconciliation that we might offer hope and healing in your name. We pray for all who are sick and are dying. May your will for them be fulfilled. Fill us with your mercy and kindness that we may care for them with loving hearts as you bring them to the wholeness of your peace. Loving God, help us to turn our hearts towards you. We lift all of these prayers up to you, O oh God, knowing you hear our deep and fervent needs. So now let us pray the words your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There is no, need, there is no end to the possibility of God among us. If we endeavor to grow in love, if we open ourselves to creativity and imagination, if we dare to dream with hope, God will guide us on paths that heal and transform. With thanks for the holy work of love in this place, let us bring our offer offerings. If you're able to, please place your offerings in the plate being passed. Alternatively, if you visit peoplespresbyterian.org, You'll don't find a donate button at the top of the page that will link you directly to a secure page where you can make a donation online. We appreciate the generosity of the people's family as we live out our faith in mission and ministry.
only wonder the gift of your wisdom is a balm to our souls. Your, you will illuminate the possibilities of radical love within and around us. You turn us from patterns that replicate pain and violence and point us in directions that free and uplift. For the power of Christ that lives in us, enabling the way of integrity, we bring our gifts with thanks. Amen. Will you please join me in the affirmation of faith printed in your bulletin or on the screen online? We believe and trust in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, and who works in us and others by the power of the Spirit. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect for creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and hope, in life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. So I want to invite you to think about your choices this week. How will you choose life for yourself and for others? And so friends, as you think about your choices, may, Jesus, may the peace of Christ be with you. May the strong arms of God enfold you and the power for the Holy Spirit give you the strength for the living of each day. Amen and amen. <laughs>